Well, hello, Go. everyone, and welcome to ProLine Daily, the longest-running sports handicapping show in America, direct from Las Vegas. I'm John Cranton, joined by Jim Feist. We're going to take a look at some baseball and NBA action. we got everything going on, including the NHL playoffs. Jim, 85-52 and 52 NBA run. You cash with the Chicago Bulls yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was sweet. Uh, the, N- the NBA, of um, you're going from the sort of the outhouse to the penthouse when you go from the regular season to the playoffs, you actually see some fantastic basketball. And you see these teams actually trying to win as opposing as opposed to trying to rest. Um, it was great. Uh, good weekend. Uh, five and one NHL weekend as well, uh, including three and oh on Saturday. Number one um, on multiple websites in, in, uh, in NHL. Uh, NHL playoff game of the year tonight at jimfeist.com for $25 along with an NBA TV showdown. I also have a Monday special play through the end of April for $14. That's right. That's a buck a day, $1 per day. Just call 866-546-9467. All right, and Dave Koken, it is high roll of the San Antonio Spurs in game one. Here's Dave's Monday special, seven days of plays, both baseball and the NBA for 25 bucks. Just call 855-472-2577. All right, we have our poll question of the week. This is how you can get involved. You can comment on, or vote on Twitter at Jim Fice Sports or Twitter at Dave Koken. We ask after the first weekend of NBA matchups what is the first round team that's most likely to pull the upset in the eastern conference jim what are the results the results said uh, 54 percent feel like the bucks the milwaukee bucks uh can pull the upset 28 percent on the bulls 10 percent on the pacers and eight percent on the hawks um i understand that concept i mean the the way the Milwaukee, of course, played that first game, total domination. But um, I see it a little bit more equal. My my vote would be about equal. The Bucks have a chance in the Bulls. And I'd lean a little bit more to the Bulls, and I'll tell you why. Isaiah, of course, had the terrible tragedy with his sister being killed in a car accident. But that really doesn't play into this. Um, now, he could have course opt out of playing game two because of that family situation but i don't see that happening but if he did of course would would bend this even more so towards the bulls the bulls have uh, a great tendency a great ability they don't shoot the ball super well but they do crash the boards their offensive rebounding is exceptional and they have the length and the energy to out rebound uh, Boston, I think, on a consistent basis. And when you talk about Isaiah, you are dealing with someone that's 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, He's an exceptional athlete, great basketball player. Uh, none of us would want to guard him. That's for darn sure. He's unguardable. But he's a defensive liability being that size. So, and and the, uh, the Bulls guards, and along with Jimmy Butler, have size, and they can take advantage of him. So on the defensive side, he's better off on the bench. On the offensive side, he definitely is an asset. So I think the Bulls have a great chance of upsetting the Celtics going forward. And the way that Toronto plays in their in their first games in the, in, in the playoffs, they have not done well, and they didn't do it well the other night. They can turn it around, though. They have the players. But this Milwaukee team is well coached. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if both these series go down to the end. And uh, you might get some upsets. The the, uh, 10% picked the Pacers, 8% the Hawks. I don't know. Um, You know, I think they're probably right. The 10% chance of upsetting Cleveland is... They did play. I mean, they played great. They were in the game. They had a last-second shot to win game one. The Pacers didn't get it, but uh, they played well. I think they'll continue to play well. But uh, the Cavs have a little bit too much, especially in the first series of games. They're not as fatigued as they might be later on when they go against better teams. 
And the Hawks, I think they're going to be up against it against the Wizards. I'm, you know, I'm saying laying points and stuff is is ideal, but uh, this is the Hawks have a couple of manipulations they've made to their lineup that may not work long term. And they played well in Game One. They didn't cover, but they probably should have. But uh, I so I agree with the poll, except that I think the Bucks and the Bulls both have about equal chances of pulling an upset. Yeah, I agree generally with the voters as well. The only team I can see getting upset would be the defending champion Cavaliers and the number two C Chicago was absolutely dominant on the glass in, in the first game. And, you know, keep this in mind, the, the Celtics, they won 53 games. A year ago, they would have been the number three seed and we wouldn't be looking at, at them as a, a you know, as the team to beat. And, I, and a lot of people were skeptical coming in too as the number one seed. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a watered down Eastern conference and the Bucks. Very impressive. Toronto is a very strong team all around. They really laid an egg in that first game at home. But what is consistent with the Bucks is the defense. They've been very strong all year, and, and even last year, too, under this coaching staff. And they didn't shoot that well in the first game. Uh, but what, look at the, what they did defensively. They held Toronto to 36-point shooting, and that's a fine Toronto offense balance. And Toronto went to the free throw line 33 times at home making 24 of them. That's more than enough generally to win. And yet they, they got blown out on their home court. And uh, the Bucks only shot 15 free throws. That, that, that's kind of a bad sign for Toronto. I got to believe it was just a bad all-around game for them. They're much better than this. However, generally speaking, it's a watered-down East. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, several upsets here in, in the East. Well, you talk about that, John. Uh, go a little further. The the N N NBA regular season is it is just a little bit more than a preseason. Um, and it it counts, but half the teams get in the playoffs, and and most of the teams don't really care very much about the seeding. It doesn't mean much to them um, overall, so they don't go out of their way even for seeding. Getting into the playoffs uh, makes a difference, of course. Some teams want to make it, some don't. Uh, if they think they have a chance, they want to be in. Like, for example, the Heat were disappointed not to make it. And I, the reason that the watered down East, definitely the Cleveland Cavaliers are not as good as a lot of people thought. And they are definitely not the favorite to win at all. But you don't really know how good or how bad a team is if they're playing preseason games. Now, that's generally the case when you talk about Football, NFL football preseason. You know, many times a team will go 0 and 4 and then play really well, or they'll go 4 and 0 and play really poorly. So you don't really know. So you come into the playoffs and you have a number one seed in Boston. You have a number eight seed in Chicago, and the eight is looks as good. So that's how you're not getting a clear picture coming into the playoffs why the so many of the road teams actually won and or covered in the first round, uh, game one in these first eight games. Uh, so I think you're going to see more of that. You'll see some line adjustment, of course, things like that. But um, that's, that's the reason I think you're getting a little bit of this skew towards the dog and the road team because the home, the home teams who are the higher seeds – are not as good as people thought, and the road teams who are the lower seeds are not as bad as people thought. Yeah, that's right. And the Milwaukee Bucks coming into this series were plus 320 to win the series, and the Bulls, two plus 400. Yeah, they are both up <laughs> one nothing after the first game. Uh, another one, series out west, let's take a look at that. The Memphis Grizzlies were plus 700 to upset the Spurs, and well, they, they, they played a good first quarter and then totally dominated by San Antonio the rest of the way in a, in a blowout. And then we got, what, a double-digit line here for a game two? You know, normally after a team wins game one, the, the line will skew towards the losing team, thinking that they're going to come back with more energy because they're down 0-1. That didn't happen in this point spread. Where it was 9, it went up to 11 now. So... What the odds makers are saying is they don't see a competitive balance here between Memphis and the Spurs. I agree. Um, 
there's a 20 point there's a 20 game difference in in how many games they won throughout the year the Spurs are definitely the better team they have better talent um, Kawhi Leonard is I mean he's he's in the mix for being most valuable player and um, I mean I'm sure that it's still with the other two guys Harden and uh, Westbrook but you could talk you could talk talk about Kawhi Leonard because he is a fabulous player and he means a lot to this team. But the first quarter was aberrational um, for Memphis. They scored a lot, pushed the game to go over the total. It went over the total. Uh, I think the total was 191. They, went, they scored 193. I lost that bet, but um, it was aberrational. It happened in the first quarter the rest of the game. Memphis never got over 19 points in each of the four, three quarters following that. So it, it was one quarter. I don't think you're going to see that one quarter anymore. I think uh, they, Spurs, Popovich, they know how to put pressure, get in the face of Conley. That slows it down, cuts off the passing lanes, and Gasol's not going to have that open lane to the basket and hit his jumper and set, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to see it. That's why the line is 188 at this point. So um, interesting, but you learn after watching these teams, and I watched every minute, and some some of the games I watched the replay of them. Yeah, that's a good point. You just look at the overall stats of Memphis, and you might say, well, this is a good team you want in the playoffs, number three in the NBA in points allowed, number six in field goal shooting defense. they got the power front court. They can kind of rub bodies with everybody, which you need against San Antonio. On the other hand, you mentioned it. There's a 20-game difference as far as wins pretty much. Well, actually, yeah, counting the playoffs, it's exactly 20 games between these teams. It's an enormous difference, and we saw the better team just run away with it at home. So Memphis is in bounce-back mode. The way I look at tonight is really the, the coaching point-counterpoint because what the Spurs did is they attacked Mike Conley, played the physical game, got him out of his rhythm. He was – off his game, 5 of 14 shooting. And what do you do if you're Memphis? you got to make some moves where knowing that San Antonio is going to focus on him. On the other hand, San Antonio's coaching staff is either the best in the league or one of the best. They know how to make adjustments in-game and prepare for teams. So uh, I can understand why the Spurs being a double-digit favorite in this one. Keep in mind that when the Spurs score 100 points or more, they're only 4-11 and 11 against the spread that next game. So Memphis certainly wants to slow the pace down tonight. And the favorite, though, is 10-4 and 4 ATS when these teams meet. All right, if you want to get free plays each day from National Sports Service, our Vegas experts, just pick up the phone and call a toll-free number, 888-294-1970. Plus, Jim, they can follow you and comment multiple ways. <clears throat> On Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Jim Fi Sports. Sign up for 30 days of baseball for $4.99. Uh, now at JimFice.com, last year we won almost $5,000 for a $100 player. We're going to do it again this year. Uh, plus, you can get uh, free plays uh, daily by texting GAME, G-A-M-E, to 25827. And that uh, should do it for us, John. That's right. We'll see you back on Tuesday with another edition, live from Las Vegas, of ProLine Daily. We'll see you then.